The greatest gift to the libertarian electorate was the Obama administration. My name is Jack Pitney. I'm a professor of government at Claremont McKenna College. We're here at Claremont McKenna College in the Marion Minor Cook Athenaeum. Is there a libertarian electorate in the United States? Well, that's hard to say. Uh, the most consistent aspect of public opinion in the United States is inconsistency. Uh, the great virtue of the libertarian philosophy is consistency. Limited government in both the economic realm, things such as government spending and regulation, as well as the social realm. Uh, here we're talking about issues such as abortion and drug control. Uh, this is a, an appealing philosophy for some Americans, but public opinion is more complicated than that, in part because people don't follow politics very closely. Uh, so on certain issues, you can definitely see libertarian tendencies. There's a libertarian strain in American political thought, uh, but uh, the hardcore libertarian electorate is actually fairly small. Libertarians are treated as if they have quirky beliefs precisely because they're consistent. Uh, in a country where a lot of people have inconsistent beliefs, uh, an adherence to principle, a consistent adherence to principle, sometimes looks pretty unusual. To the extent that you do have a libertarian electorate, it tends to be younger people. Uh, it tends to be people who are, uh, have a background in economics and uh, who, uh, because of their life experiences, uh, believe in a hands-off policy on social life. A lot of people are grabbing for the libertarian label because it sounds very appealing. Libertarian sounds uh, a lot like liberty, and Americans like liberty. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's a good handle to have, and it's one that a lot of people reach for even though it doesn't always fit. Because a lot of the people who say they favor smaller government in the abstract tend to favor larger government in the particular. You don't get that many true libertarians in big business because big business likes regulations that uh, disadvantage their competitors. They like doing a lot of business with the government. If you go to town hall meetings during the day, a disproportionate share of the people at those town hall meetings have white hair. Even though they may call themselves limited government people, they're passionate supporters of Social Security. People who grew up in the greatest generation uh, tended to be very favorable toward the New Deal. Many of them served in the Second World War. They were used to big organizations, uh, big units in American society. Younger people today are definitely more libertarian than people who grew up in the greatest generation for this reason. The greatest gift to the libertarian electorate was the Obama administration. The uh, problem that libertarians have had is making the case against big government uh, at times when government hasn't been growing as big. At a time when you have massive expansion of government power, massive government spending, people start to see the downsides of that philosophy. And the libertarian philosophy starts to become more appealing. But uh, you have to put it in perspective. The vast majority of voters aren't going to read The Road to Serfdom or The Constitution of Liberty. Uh, nevertheless, uh, starting from a relatively small base, the libertarian electorate uh, has a, a good deal of room for growth. And uh, precisely because of the Obama administration, we're seeing increased attention to libertarian ideas. Obviously, the office holder who most closely represents the libertarian electorate is Ron Paul. Ron Paul, formerly the Libertarian Party candidate for president uh, on most issues, uh, straight down the line, libertarian, limited government in the uh, economic and social realm, although Ron Paul is pro-life on abortion. Ron Paul excited so many young people in the last election cycle because he stood for something. Uh, he told the truth as he saw it. Uh, he was uh, somebody who didn't seem to be repeating the same talking points and applause lines as other politicians. Uh, and that was very appealing to many young Americans. I think it would be very difficult for uh, a president to be elected on a strictly libertarian platform. Uh, for example, take the issue of Social Security. Libertarians believe in privatization of Social Security. 
That is a very difficult sell for many Americans, particularly senior citizens. President Bush learned that in 2005 when he attempted even a partial privatization of Social Security. Uh, the move wasn't very popular. Nevertheless, uh, I think it is very possible for Americans to elect uh, a president who has a basic commitment to limited government, though as a pragmatic matter, uh, there may be uh, some departures from that basic principle. That's the way political life works. Libertarians can be swing voters un in certain circumstances. In some Republican primaries, you definitely get uh, a libertarian segment uh, coming out to vote. In the general electorate, uh, the swing voters tend to be independents, and it's hard to describe any kind of consistent ideology to which they adhere. Uh, again, the uh, most consistent aspect of American public opinion is inconsistency. Well, the internet does have serious implications for uh, the libertarian movement. It's a way to communicate, uh, it's a way to educate, and it's uh, an equalizer, uh, by which I mean this. Uh, conservatives and liberals control uh, the, uh, the major organizations of American culture and American society. The libertarian movement is more decentralized and the internet is a great tool for a far-flung constituency to find itself and to communicate with one another.